Hi everyone, Ashley here, and I'm excited to tell you about a new Zoho app which is free to use, and it's called Zoho PDF Editor. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Let's jump over to the sales page and check it out. So here we are on the sales page, and if I scroll down here, you will see some of the features. So you can add text, you can add shapes and symbols, you can format your text with a rich text format editor. Uh, you can highlight text, add images, add links, add fillable fields, add barcodes, QR codes, you can add, add sign fields, you can collaborate with your team if you've got other people using Zoho um, and you are all on the same account and you can delete or redact text uh, and other images and other elements on, on a PDF. So let's just scroll up to the top of this and just talk about this for a second because about a week ago, no, two weeks ago, I started doing a video about this and I came across a bug. It's a new, it's a new product. It's a new application. So generally, you know, when it's something's very new, you're going to find the odd thing. And it's really important that when you do find things that you report them to Zoho or whoever the developer is, otherwise they won't get better. So I found something, I reported it. Now that's actually very interesting because in the time between me reporting that and coming back, to do this second video, I've noticed that at the bottom here, you can see a note just saying, you can import PDFs up to 50 pages or 10 megabytes, whichever's the biggest. That has now changed. Uh, it's still showing on this sales page, but that's now changed to 150 pages. And I think it's 40 megabytes or 50 megabytes. We'll see on the next, on the next page. But it just shows how quickly this is moving forward. And uh, now that was a limitation to me, I thought, there's going to be some people who are not going to be able to use this because it's not enough pages. But I think now 150 pages, 40 megabytes or 50 megabytes, whatever it is, it's it's a reasonable amount. I think this is going to now fall into uh, a category where most people are going to be able to make use of it. So it's an online tool. And to get to it, you can either come to the sales page and click that button or you can go up to the address bar and you can type uh, pdf.zoho.eu. Uh, or if you're in a different region, .com or .au, whatever your region is. So here we've got a page uh, to upload a PDF. So I'm just going to grab one off screen here for a second. And if you notice while I'm doing this, yeah, here's the here's the updated note along the bottom: 150 pages or 50 megabytes. So it is actually uh, it is actually very usable now. So I'm just going to find uh, I've got an example PDF here, which was a Zoho document, a Zoho marketing document. And I'm going to just click open now. So you can see how easy that was. I've added the file. Uh, I've opened it. And here we are, we can start editing straight away. So this is brilliant. If I start at the top left, then we've got an option here called file. And under that, you can upload PDFs, you can import from cloud drives, you can manage the documents you have, you can save your PDF. So whatever changes you make, you can click on this option and download the new version of the PDF. You can share it, you can print it, and you can delete it. Then we've got to the right of that, we've got the file name. So the, the storage, another, um, not a limitation, but another thing you need to keep in mind with this is that it uses uh, Zoho Work Drive to store the files. So I, although Zoho are marketing this as a new application, I would say that it's more of an extension to WorkDrive because I've noticed now in WorkDrive, if you've got PDFs, you can right click to edit the PDF and it opens in here. So it's kind of more of a little extension, a little, a nice little add on to WorkDrive, but you can use it for free. You need a Zoho account, but it doesn't need to be a paid one. So if I click on this icon here, which I'm not going to do right now, uh, it says choose folder. That will be the folder where it's stored in WorkDrive. And the same as this star icon, add to favorites, that will be adding it to favorites in WorkDrive. So then we've got the next row down and here we've got organize pages. So if I click on that, all the pages load. And from here, I can reorganize the pages. So if I want to just move one of those pages further down, I can just move it to there and let go. And you can see that it moves. Another way of doing that is I can just change the number on the page. So I can change that from two, say to five and hit enter and it will move to position five. Uh, you'll notice as well, when I hover over, you can see uh, there's an option there to delete the page 
or an option to preview the page. Now preview just brings you back to the editor. Uh, in between the pages, you can see a green line if I put the mouse there and if I click on that, I can add a page. Obviously I don't need that because I'm just gonna delete that page. Um, one limitation that I found here is that you can't change or move the first page. So if for some reason you wanted to update this PDF with a new front cover, you can't actually do that here, which is really a disappointment. So if I try and move that, we just get an option, sorry, a message saying uh, operation is not supported for first page. Um, I can't move anything before that and I can't delete it either. If I try to do that, we get the same message. So hopefully that's something that will change in the future, but for now, I just wanna let you know that that is a limitation. Um, I can see great applications for this. If you want to, we'll talk about fillable forms in a minute, but if you wanna create fillable forms, I've worked with insurance brokers who want to combine policy documents with renewal documents so they can send out one file to their clients. You can certainly do that here. Um, and yeah, I think you just do insert here, insert PDF from work drive or desktop and it will add it on to the end here. And then you can just go back to the editor. So that is pretty much uh, that page there. So we're gonna jump back in. Now we can look at the toolbar. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit uh, just to some text here. So the first thing here is highlight. So when I click on highlight, it let, lets me draw out a rectangle and highlight some area or part of the document. If I click on that highlighted area, I can resize it. Let's say I wanted to include that as well. Uh, I can delete it. When you click on an object, you can normally click delete up here. Um, or I can move it. So I can move it down here, let's say, and resize it like that. So that is the highlighting. And I could do that as many times as I want. I can go back up here to highlight and just draw out another rectangle here, for example. And if I want to delete that, as I said, I can click on it and hit delete. The next thing is arrays. Now this isn't really arrays. If I draw over this, again, it gives me a rectangle. Uh, it looks like it's deleted it, but it actually hasn't. If I click back in that area, you can see the rectangle. So it's essentially just a white rectangle. Um, I have some concerns over that. I haven't tested it. I'm only just thinking through this now as I'm doing this video. If I was to get this document and open it in Adobe Acrobat Pro, I think there's a chance that I could go in here and find that and delete it um, like that. And to me, that's a little bit of a concern. It needs to be tested and verified. And maybe that's something I'll follow up on in another video or in another uh, post about this subject, because that is a potential security issue if what you're trying to do is redact some, some text. If you're just looking to remove something, just hide it from the page, then it's totally fine. Uh, let's just go now to the next objects. So we've got cross, check, and circle. So let's say you're filling out a form, an application form, something like that. Quite often they ask you to check a box. So you can click on check and you can get this check mark and you can just put it somewhere like that. I put it in the wrong place there, but that's okay because I can click on it and I can move it down like that. Uh, you'll notice there as well when I do click on it, I've got the option to resize it and I've got the option to delete it as well. And the same thing happens for a cross. I can come down here and do the same. I can do the same with a circle. Not sure where I'd wanna put the circle. One improvement that I think can be made here is if I was filling out a document and the fact that you may have noticed there when I use the check or any of these symbols and I click it on the screen, that tool is let go of. So I can't now continue to click in other places. And typically if you're filling out some kind of form, there's normally a series of boxes that you have to tick. It's, it's unusual that there's just one checkbox if, if that's what's being used on the page. So in that case, I have to uh, put that in the box, then I have to go back to check again, and then I have to check again and go back to check again. And it would just be nice there if I can keep doing this and when I'm finished, I can just uncheck it at the top. Um, so there we go. Then the next thing we've got is image. So if I click on that, you can upload an image. You can insert from a URL. You can pick from your work drive. You can, you can obviously have a library here, uh, Google Photos, Flickr and web search. So let's maybe let's try web search because I actually haven't tried this. There we go. There's something, some flowers. 
insert and there is a nice is it a png no it's not but it's fine just like everything else we can click on it and resize it you might notice as well with an image we've got some extra options on the left hand side we can crop we can um, preview the image we can annotate the image so if i wanted to annotate this let's just do that and if i go over to uh, let's say the highlighter and click red this looks quite big but i'm not sure how you resize it but you could highlight something if it was text you can draw an arrow let's pick this one here whoops i've done that wrong draw the arrow there we go we can move that around and once we've done everything we want to do on there oh there was the size of the brush at the top oh no it's not doing it on this one um okay once we've done that and we've edited we've annotated it we can click done and you can see now that annotated image is saved back into the document so we've got an image in there let's just resize that down we can click this little icon here as well for advanced settings and you'll see a lot of the other things coming up now have the same menu on the left hand side so you can um, kind of customize a little bit further whatever it is you're working on the shapes actually don't have this but if we go onto text box now we can draw out a text box just the same way that we've done the uh, highlighting and the arrays you see you get that same panel on the left hand side you can say this is a text box okay and like that you can highlight it and you can just try again there we go i just have to highlight it and then it'll pop up there we go and uh yeah change the size you know whatever we need to do here basically uh so we can add text into a document you've got some options here on the left hand side to control the formatting a, a little bit and then we've got objects objects at the moment is just barcode and qr code so it may be that the document that you are sending out can be scanned back in so in that case you could have a barcode and you could say uh, this is a barcode uh, or whatever your barcode reference is there's a various types of barcodes you can use here and then you just click insert and the barcode appears on the screen so there we go we can just put that up there and just like everything else we can resize it you'll notice on the left hand side as well we've got those advanced options okay and then we've got qr codes works in the same way and then we've got links so links is again just very much like what we've already seen you can highlight an area so let's just highlight this text here say we wanted to make that clickable link we can do that and we can just add our link in there and click apply um, or if you had a button graphic on the PDF that says click here you can just highlight that with the um, with the link tool and that will become a clickable link so that's basically it it's it's pretty simple at the moment uh, there's there's a lot of use cases for this uh, use cases for this and I can definitely see this being improved quite quickly over the next few months uh, one thing that I haven't mentioned actually I skipped past it accidentally there is the fields I mentioned objects but not fields fields is where you uh, create your fillable PDFs so quite often what I've seen people do is they'll create a document in something like Canva uh, like a, a workbook something like that and then they'll want to make that a fillable PDF that they can give out to people or give out to people online so what I do is I click on fields and click on fillable fields and that gives me a list of field types that I can use and let's scroll down to another page just to keep this a bit tidier and I might want email so I just drag and drop that onto the page just like everything else I can click on that and resize it and you'll see as well when you click on that field you get certain options on the left hand side so I can give the field a name at the moment it's just called email field one I might want to rename that just to email and then we've got the character limit so 30 characters might be short for an email um, you might be wanting to do something more like 255 is quite a common uh, character count and that's definitely something to keep in mind because I've noticed with this again it's early days but if we just close this 
and we go back to fillable fields and we choose multi-line text box. So this would be a, an area of text. Let's just put this up here like this. You'd, you'd typically want someone to write, you know, a paragraph or something like that in there, a long description anyway. And if you notice here, it's got 120 characters. So that's not really, I, I don't think that that's enough. So just be conscious of that. If you do use these features that you'll probably want to change that. I'm not sure what the limits are here. Let's say a thousand, see if it will let us do that. Yeah, and it looks like it has. So again, if you want to edit these, just click on them. And um, you can put some pre-entered text as well. And um, this is a message. Okay, and then that's going to show up on the field. So that's how you add uh, pre-fillable fields to your PDF. And you can save the changes up here, save the, uh, save the PDF. And you can also download it here. So I could do download and that would just download this PDF. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it gives you a good idea of what you can do with this. And if you've got ideas about how you can use this in your business, let me know. I'd love to hear about them. And if you've got any questions and you think I can help, always get in touch. Talk to you soon. Bye.